This is a very high level introduction to Wireshark. As always, let's start with help. So we type in Wireshark Tag Help and the results shows the version of Wireshark and the different tags and qualifiers that we can use with the tool. Now I've got two machines set up here. I've got my Kali machine, so I'll start Wireshark just by typing in Wireshark. And on the other side, I have a Windows machine powered up. So the first thing I want to do is take a look at my capture interfaces and make sure that I have enabled promiscuous mode on all of the interfaces. I can go more in detail and manage each of the interfaces. And you can see my Ethernet connection is Ethernet 0. And so to begin capturing, I just double click the interface that I want to use. So in the Windows machine, I'm going to check my IP address. And that gives me a 192.168.1170. And now I'm just simply going to ping a website. It can be any website. I'll choose google.com. Now I'll go back to my Kali machine and make sure that I'm actually scrolling to the last packet so I can see it in real time. Now I go back to the Windows machine and I do the ping again and you can see how the interface in Wireshark comes alive immediately. What I'm doing here is I'm taking a look at all of the information that is coming and going associated with this interface, the Ethernet Zero. Now, I can also ping an IP address. I know, for instance, my Kali machine, so I can ping that. I can also ping a website, so in this case I'll use warrenalford.com, my website. And you can see that it returns the IP address for that. I can also open a browser, Chrome, and I'll go to warrenalford.com. And on the interface in Cali, you can see where the traffic is going from the machine, which is 1.170, to my website. I go to another link on my website, and it converts that information from the domain name to the IP address. Now let's take a look at the interface here and just kind of get a feel for what it does. So the information that it's actually capturing here, and you can rearrange these columns however you would like to. I like to have the number of packets, the source, the destination, 
the protocol and information about each packet as an overview in the top window. The middle window, as the individual packet opens up more information there as well. Now we can follow any conversation or any exchange, and in this case, let's just follow the TCP stream. And that filter you'll notice here is TCP.stream EQ54. So when this page pops up, this interface page, it's actually because we are filtering. Now let's go ahead and clear that filter and we can choose certain things in here among all of the filters. If you just want to look at IPv4 traffic only and you want to look at that by IP address, you can select that and then you have to click the little arrow over here. It's kind of like a little execute or submit tab. And when that happens, it's going to automatically search for what you're looking for. You can also do column sorting. So you can sort, like for instance, here I've sorted on the destination IP address, and so it kind of builds that address in a chronological fashion by number. You can save this, and when you save it, it actually saves to a PCAP file that you can reopen at any time that you want and analyze that traffic in a week or two weeks or later that day of the packet traffic. We'll be looking at this much more in depth as we go into the penetration testing. Take some time to get used to it, go through the menus, and We'll do that in upcoming videos as well.